Welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials and in today's tutorial we're going to continue on from the last video where we were doing some load calculations and we're going to add an acute chronic workload ratio as well as an upper limit and lower limit bar on our graph so that we can easily visualize our acute chronic workload ratio and see if we're staying in the desired zone. As a reminder, this graph is fully functional. We can change our athlete name and it will automatically change to their values as well as we can also change the rolling average that we are going to be calculating off of, whether it's three sessions, five sessions, seven sessions, or really however many you want. And the graph is going to automatically update to reflect our decisions. This is going to be a really powerful trick if you are using any sort of load monitoring with your athletes and want a quick and easy way to visualize this. So let's get after it. <clears throat> okay, so we're back and as you can see, we are starting off with the sheet that we actually finished the last Strength Coach Tutorials video with. And as a reminder, what we did in that video, we created a drop down menu here at the top where we're actually able to select our athlete. And then we are calculating a rolling average and a team rolling average based on a predetermined number of days. So right now it's at four. I can put that to seven or 10 or 20 or really whatever I want. And you can see that the graph changes to reflect the choices that we make. In today's video, we're gonna do um, the acute chronic workload ratio, which is another way that you might wanna visualize your workload. And before we get stuck into it here, um, a quick reminder that if you are finding any value in these videos, it really helps the channel out. If you could like and subscribe to the videos, comment below, and also share this video on social media so that more people can see it. That really provides me the opportunity to um, dedicate time towards putting more videos out. So um, I thank you in advance if you are able to kind of do that. So let's get after it. And um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to calculate out the acute chronic workload ratio and the different values that we're looking for here. So I'm going to move this chart off to the side. And if you can remember, we have these spilled, spilled arrays. So what we need to do is we would want to calculate um, basically for the for the acute chronic workload ratio, we're going to just divide the training load or the acute chronic training load to the rolling average training load based on the number of days that we're looking for. So I'm just going to add um, a title here, AC workload, and that's something that you would typically see um, as a as a, um, a title for an acute chronic workload. And if I was to just divide this out and I put equals and I selected this cell and then divided it by this cell, I'm gonna get the value for my acute chronic workload. And I could easily drag this down, but you'll see that I'm gonna to start to get some errors and I would have to come back to this spreadsheet and update it every time and drag it down. But luckily with the spilled arrays function in the newer versions of Excel, Excel 365, when I put in one formula up here, it actually pulls out all of the data. And then we use the name range to actually refer to all of this when we put it in our actual um, chart. We're going to do the same thing with our acute chronic workload ratio, but there's no place that we're filtering from or that we're using an average if or a sum if. So how are we going to actually... Um, do a full spilled array. Well, if you remember from the previous video, when we use a hashtag reference, it actually refers to a whole spilled array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put equals and then the first value that I actually want to um, look at, and I'm just going to put a hashtag after that. And then I'm going to divide that by the rolling average first value and put a hashtag after that. And when I hit OK, what you're going to notice is that Excel takes the first two um, in the row and divides those, and then the second two and divides those, and then the third two and divides those, and all the way down, so that if we were to actually add more values on at the end, it's gonna continue the calculations for, for however many values that we actually have. So we can actually use the fact that these are spilled arrays to our benefit and just do this whole formula all the way down. So 
we're going to put that on our graph now. So I'm going to create um, I'm going to create a name out of this so I can go to formulas, name manager. And if you see, we named everything video date, video role average. So I'm going to name this. Um, sorry, I want to go to define name. So not name manager, define name. And I'm going to refer to the whole thing and for hashtag. And that refers to the whole thing. And we're going to call this video. AC for acute chronic and hit OK. And if we type in equals video AC and pull that, you can see that it's going to pull out all of those values. So let's chart that on our actual graph. So the way we can do that is I can just go to my graph and I can right click on it and hit select data. And where it says legend entries, I'm going to hit add. And it's going to ask me what I want the series name to be. And I'm going to just select the top here. And then it's going to ask me what my series values are. And I'm just going to select all of the values that I want to look at and hit OK. And what you'll see is it has charted that, but it's charted it all at the bottom. But I'm going to change this so that it has our named range in it. So where it says dollar sign N4 to N23, I'm just going to put in video AC, hit OK. And then so it's going to put it's going to put that in. And as we add more and more, it'll keep kind of updating. It'll be dynamic. Now, you can see the series down here. And because these values are sort of 1, 0 0.16, 0 0.27, and our loads are all measured in hundreds, um, in sorry, tens and hundreds, the values are just going to hang out at the bottom here. We want to put these on a different axis so that we can see these in relationship to our loads and that it doesn't look... Um, or it doesn't just sit along the bottom here because the values are too small to be shown on the graph. So the way to do that is actually if I right click on my graph and go to change series chart type and it's going to open up um, a box that looks kind of like this and I'm going to scroll down to that AC workload ratio and I'm going to click secondary axis and hit OK. So what has that done? I'm going to put that back it's added another axis on the right hand side of my chart that is in a different scale so that this acute chronic workload ratio line chart actually sits in the middle of my chart now and not just at the bottom because of the values on the left hand side here. So I'm gonna rescale this a little bit. So if I double click on it, it's gonna open the format axis and right now it's selected as automatic and I'm gonna hit maximum axis value and I'm gonna just change this. So I'm gonna put 2.5 and then keep the minimum at zero and then make the majors 0 0.5 and then I'll close this out. And you can see now we go from zero to 2.5 and that just sort of scales it a little bit better for the graph that we're looking at. So that's the first part of this trick. And if you know anything about acute, acute chronic workload ratios, Typically, the, the magic number that's touted is somewhere between about a 1.3 and a 0 0.8. And we want to try to keep this line in between there so as um, not to increase the likelihood of something like a soft tissue injury or um, different injuries that way. So what I like to do on the graphs when I make these is I'm actually going to put a visualization on the graph that has the... Um, that has the 1.3 and the 0 0.8. So I'm just gonna put a high value and I'm gonna use a little if function and I'm gonna use the spill to raise to kind of put this in. So um, what we're gonna do is equals if and we can pick really any value on that we're pulling out because they're all spilled arrays. But let's look at training load. So if training load and we're gonna put the hashtag in there because we wanna refer to the whole thing. And we're going to put does not equal nothing. So two, um, two chevrons kind of open towards each other. Does not equal nothing, which is represented by double quotations. Then if it does not, what do we want to put in there? We want 1.3 because that's the value that we want. Otherwise, we just want it to be nothing. And I'm going to close that off. And what you're going to notice is that we've used the spilled array now. And we've just kind of put a 1.3 all the way down there because that's going to be our high value. And I'm going to do the same thing for our low value. 
and I'm going to copy that formula over, paste it, and it'll still work because it really doesn't matter which one we pick, but I'll still pick the load one. And in this case, we want it to be 0 0.8, and I'll hit OK. And I'm going to name these ranges the same way that I did before. So I'll select the whole thing, formulas, and define name, video, hi. And instead of 04, I want it to refer to 04 and then hashtag, OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here, formula, define name, video, low. And instead of P4, I want it to refer to P4, hashtag, and hit OK. So now let's add these to our graph in the same way that we just did. So we right click on the graph and hit select data and we'll put add and series name. We want high and then series values. We'll select all of these, but instead of this, we want it to be video high, hit okay. And it's added that line all the way across and let's add one more. And Excel's pretty smart. It knows that the values of this are gonna match on the secondary axis more. So it'll automatically add those to the secondary axis. Instead of this, we want it to be video low. Oops. Video low and hit OK. So you can see now it's added those values to our graph. And I'm just going to change the high value to be represented by red. So I'm just going to double click on it there and go to the paint can icon and change the color to red. And if you wanted, we can make the line like a little bit thicker just to make it show up a bit better. And the green will just make it a more kind of um, healthy green. I'll make that just a little bit bigger. So there's our two sort of values. And that's really how we would start to visualize our acute chronic workload ratio on a graph. And as you can see, this graph's kind of busy. So if we wanted to take, say, the team and the rolling average off, if I select anywhere on the graph, we can go over to a filter icon on the right hand side and I'll click that and I can actually click off certain um, values in my graph and hit OK. So now that changes this graph out a little bit. And for example, if I wanted to change these to look a little bit different, so maybe um, I wanted to go to the paint can icon and I wanted to fill these and maybe we could use um, a picture or texture fill or a gradient fill. Now let's use a texture fill. And no, pattern fill, let's do that. And we'll add something like, I don't know, I like these lines on some of my graphs and under more colors, if we just make this a little bit transparent, so if I just take it up just a little bit and hit okay, you can see that it kind of sits nicely. And now we have this acute chronic workload graph. Again, because of the way we've set it up, the whole thing is dynamic. So if I change my athletes, it's gonna automatically change my graph or if I change my workload ratios, it's gonna automatically update my graph. So I hope that this trick helps you out and that's just an easy way that you can start to visualize some acute chronic workload ratios or other uh, metrics that you find important. If you like this video, please share it on social media because that really helps me out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.